Have you considered a change of pace when it comes to the size of your home? Do you think you could make the change to something less? Recently, podcast listener Samantha asked about the pros and cons of downsizing their home. Here's Samantha. Our family, which includes my husband, myself, and our three-year-old son, live in Charlotte, North Carolina, in a very desired area. We purchased our house three years ago for $415,000 and can list it today for $700,000. We still owe $300,000 on our home, but are considering selling our home due to the amount of equity we would have. This would allow us to downsize from our over 3,000 square foot home and invest some of the money as well. If we stay in our home, there are a lot of major repairs that would need to be done, which would total close to $100,000. Those repairs eat into our monthly savings. My husband works from home now and will continue to, and I am a stay-at-home mom to our three-year-old. We could move anywhere, really. Thanks again for your help and all of your great, inspiring content. Samantha. Samantha, thank you so much for connecting with me. What an interesting question. And it's actually one that I think a lot of people are considering right now. A home bought even a few years ago in this country, on average, is a whole lot more than it used to be. We bought our place in 2013 for $350,000. And now the all-knowing, all-powerful Zillow says it might be able to go for $550,000. That's a $200,000 jump in, what is that, nine years? Your example is even more impressive of Samantha from $400,000 to $700,000 in just three years. You gotta love that North Carolina market, huh? Now I can agree that it's definitely an intriguing idea to tap into that equity to accomplish other family financial goals, right? And since you asked what I would do, well, I always like to run the pros and the cons of a decision before jumping into it. So that's what I'm gonna do in today's video. Hey everyone, this is Andy Hill from Marriage, Kids, and Money, a channel dedicated to helping you strengthen your family tree and live financially free. If you like what you hear today, please consider giving me the YouTube triple thanks. That's hitting the like button, subscribing to the channel, and then commenting something nice down below. Thank you very much for considering it. Okay, let's start with pro number one of downsizing, less housework. As a homeowner, housework fills many hours of my day and my week and my month and my year. Cleaning, vacuuming, yard work, raking, weeding, bagging, lawn stuff, all that stuff. Now, there's no dodging this housework when you downsize, but there may be a lot less of it for you to do. Recently, my parents downsized from a 3,200 square foot house to a 1,300 square foot house. The yard work and the housework have gone down significantly for them. They spend less time keeping the house and landscaping tidy and more time relaxing, exercising, volunteering, and spending time with their family. Con number one of downsizing, less space. Now this could really be a pro or a con depending on what your goals are, but one thing my parents did say is that they would prefer a little bit more space for hosting at the house. So that begs the question then, how much square footage is the right amount for a family of three in your situation? Well, the range that I've found online is anywhere from 500 to 700 square feet per person might feel comfortable. So depending on your lifestyle and your needs and the fact that your husband works from home, you might wanna find a house in the 1500 to 2100 square foot range. Now, depending on where you are in the country, that could seem ridiculous or appropriate. If another child is in your future and you become a family of four, consider something in the 2,000 to 2,800 square foot range. Knowing that that top range is not too far away from your current square footage, Samantha, perhaps the lower side makes more sense for you. We have a family of four and our house is around 2,700 square feet right now. It feels like the right size for our family in this current stage of life. Let's recap the home square footage suggested per person just for a fun exercise for somebody. Obviously this is hotly debated. I posted it on Twitter. Some people thought it was great. Some people thought it it was ridiculous. Okay, let's do it anyway. Family of two, 1,000 to 1,400 square feet. Family of three, 1,500 to 2,100 square feet. Family of four, 2,000 to 2,800 square feet. Family of five, 2,500 to 3,500 square feet. And a family of six, 3,000 
to 4,200 square feet. The interesting thing about home ownership, just like personal finance, is that it's all personal people. So these square feet ranges are all well and good, but if it doesn't fit your situation, then forget these numbers. Pro number two of downsizing, access to equity. Getting access to hundreds of thousands of dollars is a huge upside to downsizing your home. You can use this extra money for so many things like investing for the future, paying off debt, giving back, going on family vacations, or even making your new house more comfortable. These options can be so plentiful that I'd recommend taking time to sit down and specifically write down what you do with the money, and then ask your partner to do the same thing. While this potential windfall might feel like a blessing, if you two aren't on the same page, then it could cause some unintentional marital fights. It's funny, when we get a lot of money, we fight, and when we don't have a lot of money, we fight, right? <laughs> <laughs> Con number two of downsizing. Selling a house is expensive. While on the surface, the quick math problem looks like the sale price, $700,000, minus the current home mortgage principal, $300,000, would net you $400,000, right? Well, unfortunately, that won't be the final amount you'll walk away with. You'll wanna crunch the numbers on some important costs that go along with selling your house. Shout out to bankrate.com for these categories and numbers. Real estate commissions, up to 6% of the sale of your home would be $42,000. Title insurance, which is typically a percentage of the purchase price, in this case, we'll use 1%, that would be $7,000. Repairs to your house to get it to sell. Now this all depends on how much work is needed, but even you, Samantha, said it might be $100,000 to get it in a good spot that you'd wanna live there. So I don't know, that could be a lot of money, right? Then you got escrow fees, you got property taxes, you've got things like moving costs, think about that. Attorney fees, transfer taxes, home staging, seller concessions, pre-listing home inspection, and the list unfortunately goes on and on and on. So at the end of the day, consider that potentially $100,000 or more of this $400,000 might go away with just the general costs of selling a home. Pro number three of downsizing, owning a smaller home is less expensive. While I've almost talked myself out of this downsizing idea because of the cost to sell the thing, it's important to note one of your major complaints, Samantha. It's expensive to maintain this larger 3,000 square foot home, right? When you own a smaller home, you'll potentially have fewer things to fix, fewer upgrades to make, and fewer costs to incur. This all depends on the home you would downsize to, but the goal is with a smaller home, you'll get smaller problems, right? To put some math around this idea, a general rule of thumb is to save up one to 4% of the value of your home for home maintenance each year. For that $700,000 home, that's $7,000 to $28,000 per year. A few years of not updating your home, just like our family has done over the past few years, will make that number creep up to 100K real fast. Let's say you found a $300,000 to $400,000 home that you were able to buy outright with no mortgage. Then you'd be able to look at $3,000 to $16,000 per year instead. That sounds a lot more comfortable. Con number three of downsizing, you have to buy another home. Okay, let's say you decide to sell your house and you get a few hundred thousand dollars back. That is awesome. But now it's time for the next step, which is where are you gonna live now? Hmm. That can be an exciting decision, but it can also be a really stressful one, especially in this market. In my 18 years as a homeowner, this feels like the craziest time I've ever seen to buy a home. That's just my outsider looking in opinion, but I've got real estate agent friends discussing the crazy bidding wars they've been in, offers of $100,000 over asking price, and people settling for a home they maybe aren't thrilled with because they just needed somewhere to live. If you decide to leave North Carolina altogether and find somewhere quieter and less competitive, that's probably a different story. But if you decide to stay in the ultra competitive market that increased your home by $300,000 in just three years, then be ready for an ultra competitive home purchase on the other side. To add more pain to the process, mortgage rates are now at their highest rates in 14 years. To get a look at the latest rates based on your situation, check out Credible. They compare all rates with top lenders and help you save as much as possible despite these tough home shopping times that we are in. I'll have a link in the video description to Credible. After weighing these pros and cons, if it were me, I wouldn't sell my home right now just for the equity it could bring my family. If those reasons stretch outside of money, then I might consider it. So 
Samantha. Is the juice worth the squeeze? There's gonna be a lot of squeezing to get that juice as we've talked about during this video. And once you have that juice, are you happier because of it? This isn't an easy decision for you. Luckily for you, you don't have to make it alone, Samantha. Good luck to you and your husband and whatever you do, do it together and support each other along the way. Enough from me, everybody. I wanna hear from you. Are you considering selling your home in this market to tap into your equity? What do you think are the pros and cons of downsizing your home. Please let me know in the comments below. This is Andy Hill from Marriage, Kids, and Money, signing off. Carpe diem.